you've clicked on this video because you're kind of in a tough spot where you're not hitting it straight, your tempo's kind of all over the place, and you need some tips, some tricks, in order to get that shot feeling a little bit better. Well, in today's video, I'm gonna go over some tips and tricks to give to you from somebody who's played the game for probably way too long. There's some things that have helped me in past games that help me now, and there's some new things that have helped me in 2K23 for different shots that I wanna go over with you today to help your game now. And when it comes to this game and hitting it the straightest that you can, uh, the first step for that is to find a comfortable grip for you. There's a lot to choose from, and at the end of the day, I mean, if you have another one that works for you, just continue to do that. Personally, I use a pinch method, nipple method, some call it. Uh, I use two fingers, index, thumb, um, pull the club back, and swing through. So that is the first method you can do, the method that I choose to do. It gives me, personally, I think the straightest line. Um, so that might be something that may potentially uh, work for you in this game if you're having trouble with it. Some people just do a straight thumb. Some people play with their thumb over top of the entire stick to give them more control. Uh, the first few years that I played this series, I played with just single thumb. Um, I did like a half on, half off, where I did like half of my thumb on the stick, and I would pull it back like that, and then swing through, um, which gives me a little, I mean, pretty straight. I would say pretty straight line still. It's been a while since I've actually did that swing. Um, but you can do that. I, I know that there are some people, especially on like a PlayStation controller, um, who do a thumb like this and pull it straight back and through. Um, I've had people tell me that there's this method where you do two thumbs on it uh, and pull it back and swing through. That's another method you could do. Uh, I know people who kind of set the controller down, right? And do three fingers like this. They grab a hold of the stick and pull it down and through. Um, you can do that as well. At the end of the day though, I mean, it's just whatever feels comfortable for you. Pinch for me, I think feels the most comfortable uh, to give me the straightest line. So I would come into training here. Uh, I wouldn't even hit the ball just because that wastes a little bit of time. Um, I would just do some practice swings and see, you know, which one feels comfortable, most comfortable to you. And once you get like a straight line or a straighter line than what you are normally getting, stick with it. Don't change, just perfect that. Whatever line gives you the, the straightest line now, more than likely is gonna give you the straightest line throughout your golfing days in PGA 2K. So find something that's comfortable, stick with it. After you get your grip down though, let's go over what will help you get the straightest line you possibly can get. And I would say the number one thing, the number one thing is make sure you are pulling your stick back straight. If you have to look down at the controller, look down at the controller. The first five-ish years I played this series, I would look down at the controller, make sure I'm pulling it down straight. Once I know I'm pulling it down straight, I would then look up at the golfer and swing through. The reason for this is with the stick, with your brain as well, but with the stick, when you're pulling it in any direction, it automatically wants to snap back to the middle. Automatically wants to snap back to the middle, always. And your, your fingers and your brain will kind of run with that in a way. So if you don't pull it back straight, let's say you pull it back, like, I don't know, slightly back and like to the left or right, um, you'll get a swing line like that. The stick has guided you back to the middle and you're just swinging through straight because your brain's trying to swing the club straight. Um, you'll also get something if you pull it back, something like that, where it's like you're pulling it back left, it's coming back to center, and then it kind of tails off to the left or the right or whatever direction you're you're pulling it back um, at like a wrong direction. You'll get kind of like a, a spaghetti noodle where it's like you're pulling it back right. The stick is starting to guide you back to center and then you're still trying to bring it back right. So you need to make sure you are pulling that thing back straight. If you watch my videos, sometimes you'll see me start and stop, start and stop. Uh, it's because I'm making sure I'm pulling that back straight. I don't have to look at it anymore. I've taken so many swings on this game that I can just kind of like feel it when I'm not pulling it back straight and I'll reset it. And once I get something straight, then I'll go through and finish my swing off. But that is the number one thing is you need to make sure you are pulling it back straight because if you're not pulling it back, the stick and your brain 
will work against you. The next tip I uh, I want to give kind of goes hand in hand with tempo and with keeping it the stick straight to give you the best accuracy shot. Something that people don't know is in this game, you actually don't have to do a, an entire downswing. So you're pulling it back. This is your backswing. You don't have to do an, a, a, a back or a downswing all the way up. Like you don't have to hit the housing of the controller. It will actually register it at about halfway. It'll register you having a shot as a downswing. So you can kind of get away with <clears throat> instead of pulling it back and pushing it forward all the way up to the housing, you can actually in a way kind of just throw the stick about halfway through. It's like a flick. You're doing like a little bit of a flick. So like if we do all the way to the housing, which you can go all the way to the housing, you can kind of see how it, it kind of reacts to um, your full swing through. So whatever you do with the stick, if you move it any any bit, it'll kind of react to it. But you can actually just kind of throw the stick forward instead of going all the way to the housing. And it still registers it. It, it essentially registers, like it registers up to here what your movement is and then just kind of finishes it for you. So something you can kind of get away with, um, and it's been this way for a while in, in these games, because I've done this shot for years now, um, is a little bit of more of a flick method where instead of pressing it all the way up to the housing, um, you can just kind of throw it a little bit. Just throw it a little bit uh, a little bit up just to kind of get to that halfway point between center and all the way up on the stick. It's about a halfway point where you can kind of get it and you'll get a much straighter shot. Uh, and it also helps with tempo. So I know some people are struggling with, with their tempo this way as well. When you're going all the way to the housing, it's kind of, you're fasting it. Like you're fasting, very fasting a lot. Um, but if you don't do that and you kind of throw it up instead, like your tempo won't be as fast. It'll be a little bit slower. Uh, and I think that that will help you in maybe slowing down your tempo a little bit. Uh, now, it's going to take practice, for sure, to kind of do all of this stuff. And, I mean, that's to be expected with, with any game. It's going to take some practice. It's going to take some repetition. Uh, definitely don't look at me and be like, well, why can't I straight swing, like, as straight as this? Why can't I get the tempo as good as this? You got to know, I've taken hundreds of thousands of swings in this game series. So there's a lot of just mental reps of getting everything down. But... This little, the little flick that you can do, and you can do this on PlayStation as well, not just an Xbox controller. It works on a PlayStation controller too. This little flick allows you to get a lot better tempo and also get straighter shots. Now, something else with the tempo here in 2K23. If you played 2K21, I, just forget everything you did for tempo in 2K21. Now, it is similar, but the transition is a lot smoother. So in 2K21, you would do like this hold at the top. If you played, you know. Um, you do this like little hold at the top to get your um, tempo down a little bit better for the transition. And that's how you would hit a lot of perfects. In 2K23, I found that not to be really the case. Uh, it's a lot more smooth of a transition. And what I mean by that is once you get to the top of your swing, instantly start your downswing. Now, you can hold for the additional power. And some people have found, you know, what they need to do for that to get that tempo down. But if you're just trying to get like a 99, 100, 101%, right when you get to the top of your backswing, finish it. And make sure that you get that tempo into the gray region at least. You know, doing this, get those perfects. If not, at least get you down into the fast or slow side of things. Like that. You get the 100%, you get your tempo about where you want it, you get your line a little bit straighter as well, uh, and you'll be hitting a lot better shots. Again, though, repetition, very key. Practice, very key. Um, but these are definitely good tips to kind of get you started on hitting straighter shots and getting your tempo a little bit better. Now, another thing that you might struggle with uh, are partial shots. So I have found, um, and I've, I've heard some people say that the tempo is different on partial shots. I, I don't think that's the case. Um, on partial shots, I think what is happening is people are pulling it back all the way back to the housing, you know, all all the way down, all the way down. Uh, and what's happening is they're feeling that vibration. They're feeling their power and where they're at, and they're kind of rushing through the shot for their downswing. 
So when it's, what ends up happening is you're pulling it back, you're feeling it, and you're going like, oh shit. And you're kind of just like throwing it really quickly forward, and you're getting into these these very, very fast or fast swings. Um, and you, you don't want that because it's going to shoot it, you know, way to the left. You're going to lose some distance. Uh, and, and these partial shots are actually, I mean, I think even more important this year than they were in 2K21. Uh, so what I've found that works for me in this game for partial shots is instead of pulling it all the way back to the housing, do it like halfway. I don't know what it is, like in your brain, in my brain at least, but pulling it back halfway, and once you feel that vibration, you know, you find it, um, pulling it back halfway and then throwing it forward has made my timing and my tempo a lot better um, than where it was before. So I'll do like a little half swing. Not all the way back, not like barely pulling it back, but somewhere somewhere in the middle. Somewhere in the middle there. And then finding that, you know, power and swinging through it has helped me with my partials a ton. So just kind of get used to it. Kind of get this feel. On your downswing, you're doing the same exact speed too that you would do on a normal shot. But for some reason, just pulling this back just like a little bit slower or pulling it back a little bit less is making it so at least my tempo i mean is a lot better for my partial shots than where i was with those fasts and those very fast so can just kind of come out here and just just take a couple of partials you know with your driver and kind of try that just pulling it back just a little a little bit lighter than where you were with your normal shots but still throwing it forward at the same exact speed and it's the same thing with the splash shots. Um, I know that the splash shots have, you know, kind of gotten a little bit of a roar uh, with being a little hard because if you're, if you really fast it, you know, you get something, you get something like that where it's like a big duff. Um, and you can still chip it if you mean if you want to because chipping it out of the bunker is definitely safer. But the same thing applies with the splash shot or any partial shot, uh, whether it be a flop, whether it be a splash, whether it be a chip. Um, just pull it back kind of like at a half a halfway point and then swing through it. Uh, that way, you know, it, it for some reason, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is in my brain. Maybe it'll be the same in your brain. Um, but for some reason, just kind of slowing it down just a little bit allows me to hit those tempo shots so much easier for splashes. Uh, let me show you the chips too. I mean, it, again, it's very similar. You know, you're pulling it at like a halfway clip. And then you're finishing through at the same exact speed you would have done, done on a full shot. It's just you're changing that backswing up. And then on the shorter chips, again, something that I still struggle with, but it has helped a little bit from getting away from those extremely fast. Same thing. If you pull this, this short chip, let's say you pull this back really, really hard and then you swing through it, you're gonna be getting a lot of that. And you know, you can control this to an extent with kind of just like aiming a little long and just hitting for the very fast and then playing the, the, the distance penalty and the side to side penalty as well. But like for these shorter ones, something that has helped me is pulling it back like I'm putting. Cause with a putt, I pull this back almost as light as possible to get the putter moving. Um, and it has actually helped me and if I do it for these short chips, pulling it back like very light and then finishing it through. So find the find the power for the vibration. And then pushing it through. Get out of the fast lane. If we can get into a great fast, that's great. If I can get it even better, I mean, that's what we're looking for. Of course, we're looking for like at least closer to perfect. But like this has helped me in dialing in my chips a little better by just pulling this back ever so slightly and then finishing through on these like really, really short chips. And I'm gonna have a putting tutorial coming out, but I do just wanna touch on a little bit. I kinda touched on it during the chipping, but I do wanna touch on like how I putt as well. Again, I am pulling this back as light as I possibly can on the stick. I mean, super, super light. And the same thing applies with the putting, if you'd like to. You can go all the way to the housing, but you don't have to. Again, you can kind of just throw it forward as well. Just throw it forward and it kind of finishes it for you. 
you know, you keep that flick. Um, you don't have to go to the housing at all. Now, there is some drawbacks to this. I mean, sometimes you're going to get some weird shots where it kind of goes up and canes a little bit, which, I mean, that happens to me. But I would rather have it a little bit more consistent. You'll get that. It's like a little cane where it kind of shoots off to one uh, one side. Like, you'll, you'll, you will get that a little bit, but... Sometimes, not all the time. If I just pull this back ever so slightly, I find where that vibration is. And then I just kind of push it forward. And you'll get a lot straighter line than if you, you know, go all the way to the housing where any little bit of movement can be recorded all the way up to the housing. And uh, that's it. I mean, that's all the tips and tricks I have. At the end of the day, find whatever is comfortable for you. If you like pushing it all the way to the housing, if that gives you the best outcome, do that. Uh, if holding it with one thumb, two thumb, nine fingers, a toe, whatever it may be, if that is most comfortable for you, do that. But then once you find what is comfortable for you, just beat it dead. Keep doing it over and over and over and over and over because that repetition it will eventually become muscle memory and you will become much, 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 much more consistent at the game. If you're constantly changing and doing things different and, and like constantly doing that, you're going to fall into a rut where, you know, you're going to be jumping from back and forth, different grips, different everything. So I, I suggest come into the practice range, test things out, find what works best for you and run with it. Well, that's it for today. Those are the tips and tricks I have to give you the straightest line and the best tempo. Hopefully it helped at least one of you out there. If maybe you have a different tip for somebody who runs across this video, make sure to leave a comment down below. Let them know what tip you have for them. Maybe you can help somebody out in the future who watches this. But if this is a video that you enjoyed, I would greatly appreciate it if you left a like on the video. It helps me out. It helps the video out into the algorithm. It helps the channel out, and I would greatly appreciate you. Sub to the channel, too, for more PGA 2K23 content. More tutorials are coming as well. We're going to be covering a wide range of topics over the next couple of weeks to hopefully help you out with your golf game. If that's something you're interested in, please think about subscribing to the channel. But I hope you have a great rest of your morning afternoon or evening wherever you are in the world and i will catch you on the next one